In the next section, we're going to be exploring NMDA antagonists in the management of catatonia. We talked the last time about the fact that NMDA antagonists like memantine and amantadine are generally considered third-line treatment strategies after benzodiazepines and ECT. The British guidelines really sort of upheld this recommendation, noting that when first-line therapies for catatonia are either unavailable, cautioned, ineffective, or only partly effective, a trial of an NMDA receptor antagonist such as amantadine or memantine should be considered. In addition to the British guidelines, we also have a 2024 review on the use of NMDA antagonists to help guide us. In that review, amantadine had been used in at least 27 cases of catatonia, and memantine had been used in at least 20 cases. So we're gaining more robust data about the use of these medications. Most of the cases had schizophrenia as an underlying diagnosis and rapid resolution was achieved with NMDA antagonists in some cases. A case series of amantadine also highlighted the use in patients with comorbid catatonia and delirium. So the evidence continues to suggest that amantadine and memantine should be the next-line strategies if benzodiazepines are not fully effective and ECT is not available, for example. NMDA antagonists are most commonly added in or used as augmentation for benzodiazepines, though there are reports of their use as monotherapy as well. The other agent that has garnered some interest with regards to catatonia that is also an NMDA antagonist is ketamine. Ketamine is a really interesting one because it's been associated with lysing catatonia in some reports, but it has also been associated with inducing or worsening catatonia in other reports. As a reminder, an older study showed that nine healthy volunteers receiving ketamine all developed dose-dependent psychomotor poverty, poverty of speech, apathy, and withdrawal, and six of those individuals displayed catatonia-like motor phenomenon, including posturing. So it's pretty clear that ketamine can cause catatonia and catatonic-like symptoms. But there was also a recent review of 25 cases of patients receiving ketamine for catatonia as a treatment that showed a 91% response rate and a 55% remission rate. I've talked to some experts on ketamine about kind of how they make sense of this. And they've pointed out that one way to think about this is to consider the fact that ketamine is an extremely dirty medication with actions at multiple receptors, including NMDA receptors, opioid receptors, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, cholinergic, and GABA receptors. They believe that the response of catatonia to ketamine may depend on the underlying psychiatric illness and may also depend on the dose of ketamine. They pointed out that ketamine acts on the same site of the NMDA receptor, the open channel, as memantine and amantadine, but with a much higher binding affinity. And in that way, it's actually similar to PCP, which also acts on the open channel with a higher affinity. And we know from older literature that PCP, like ketamine, can also induce or worsen catatonia. For these reasons, I personally would be quite hesitant about using ketamine in catatonic patients just because of its unpredictability, and I would err much more on the side of using amantadine or memantine, which now have more cases of success and no indication that they cause or worsen catatonia. To summarize some key points from this section, NMDA antagonists should be considered either as monotherapy or augmentation when benzodiazepines and ECT are ineffective partly effective, or cannot be used. Amantadine has been used more commonly than memantine in the case report literature, though both have been used dozens of times at this point. Reports are emerging of success using ketamine, but it continues not to be recommended because of the potential to worsen catatonia, 
and that may be related to the dirtiness of the agent compared to other NMDA antagonists.